Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. Actually, evaluating a trigonometric value too. So we have cosine x minus sine x equals square root of 2, and we're supposed to evaluate cosine of 2x. I'll be presenting two methods, and let's go ahead and take a look. And let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'd like to start with the formula for cosine of 2x. What is cosine of 2x? Well, there's three formulas, but the main one is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. This is called the double angle formula for cosine, and it comes from a sum formula when you expand cosine a plus b. You have a formula if you replace a and b both with x at the same time, then you're going to get the formula for cosine of 2x. Okay? Obviously, you can replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared. That's going to give you a formula. Or sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. That's going to give you another formula. But we don't have to worry about it because this is good as is. Now, notice that we were given cosine x minus sine x. How does that help? Well, cosine squared minus sine squared is a difference of two squares, isn't it? So we can factor it. So let's go ahead and write this as cosine x plus sine x multiplied by cosine x minus sine x. I probably told you at several points that difference of two squares is one of the most important identities, formulas, whatever you call it, in math. Very, very important, super important. Okay, probably Pythagorean theorem is important too, right? Anyways, so what do I do with this? Well, I kind of have half the answer. I know cosine x minus sine x, but I just don't know cosine x plus sine x. But that's easy to get. How do I do that? By squaring both sides, maybe. This could be a general strategy with trigonometric expression with sine and cosine. Anytime you see their sum or difference, square it. Guess what? Most of the time, it's going to help. So let's go ahead and start with cosine x minus sine x and square it. That's going to give us cosine squared x plus sine squared x. You know how I like to write a minus b squared. I write the squares first, and then the term in the middle goes last, and that's going to be 2 cosine x sine x. But guess what? Cosine x minus sine x is equal to square root of 2. So if you square square root of 2, you get what? 2, right? Yes, you get 2 if you square square root of 2. So this is equal to 2. Awesome. Now, what is that supposed to mean? This means a lot of good things. Think about it. Cosine squared plus sine squared is always 1. You should know this identity for sure, right? This is 1. So I get the following. 1 minus 2 cosine x sine x is equal to 2. If I switch these around or subtract 1 and divide by negative 2, however you want to do it, but I would just think, it, think of it this way, this is supposed to be negative 1. Why? Because 1 minus what number equals 2? The answer is negative 1. So 2 cosine x sine x must be negative 1. All right, let's write it as is. 2 cosine x sine x is equal to negative 1. Obviously, if you want, you can divide both sides by 2 and get sine x cosine x, but I don't think that's necessary. Okay, now what am I going to do with this? I know this is root 2. I need to find this. How can I find it? I don't know. Let's call it something and square it. So since it's a sum... I'm going to call it S, or S is usually reserved for sine, but uh, I guess uh, we could call it T, whatever, and then square both sides. I don't know what T is, but I'm going to find out, right? Hopefully. If you square this, just like the other one, it's going to be similar, very similar. Cosine squared X plus sine squared X minus, that's the only difference, I mean plus, that's what I meant, you know what I meant, right? Equals T squared. Okay. Now, we know that this is 1, and guess what? We also know this. Wow, that's awesome, right? That's why we do this. We square both sides because that's almost always helpful. We know that 2 cosine x sine x is equal to negative 1, and then, wow, what did I get? I got 0. That's crazy, right? t squared is equal to 0. This is good because there's only one solution for this, right? Well, in the real world, right? In the complex world, there's also one solution. Is there a complex number whose square equals 0 other than 0? I don't think so. Anyway, 0 is a very special number. Super duper powerful. Annihilator, whatever. T equals 0. Awesome. What is T, though? T is a drink? No. Not only that, but it's also cosine x plus sine x. 
So cosine x plus sine x equals 0 because that's what t is. So I got what I needed. Yay. Let's get back to the original formula. Where's my formula? Right here. So I was trying to find cosine of 2x and I got it. How? Let's write this. Cosine of 2x equals cosine squared x minus sine squared x, but we wrote it as, remember, two factors because it's difference of two squares. Now, cosine x minus sine x was given as, what? It was given as square root of 2, and I got this as 0, so their product is 0. Isn't that awesome? Okay, great. So there's only one answer, by the way. You might be thinking, like, is that going to be more than one? No. Let's talk about the second method. Again, the problem is I have cosine x minus sine x equals root 2, and I'm supposed to evaluate cosine of 2x. At this point, uh, I'm not going to use any formulas or identities, well, sort of. I just want to work with the first equation. Can I find an angle uh, that satisfies this? And the answer is yes. How do I do that? Well, you can do the following. You can replace sine x with cosine of pi over 2 minus x and then use the difference to product formula. Wow, that's going to be super duper painful. Another method you can think of is kind of guess. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. It's, it's, isn't that an awesome method? Like, can you find two values? Well, here's the thing. If cosine x is equal to root 2 over 2 and sine x is equal to negative root 2 over 2, this works. Awesome. Because their sum or difference is going to be root 2. But when is it satisfied? Is, is that possible at all? You can check. There, the sum of their squares is 1, and it actually exists on the unit circle. If you think about it, this is actually going to happen where the cosine is positive and sine is negative. That's the fourth quadrant right here, right? So we do have an angle that works, and we do know from the first method that there is only one way to do this. So what about this angle? That kind of looks like negative pi over 4, doesn't it? But negative pi over 4 is the same thing as negative pi over 4 plus 2, plus 2 pi, which is 7 pi over 4. What is that? That is x. Okay. What is 2x? Let's find out. 2x is going to be 7 pi over 2, but that's way too large. Let's go ahead and subtract something from it. 7 pi over 2 is like 3.5 pi, um, 3 pi. So if you subtract 2 pi from it, that's going to be, in other words, we can do this like 4 pi plus 3 pi over 2, and this is 2 pi plus 3 pi over 2. This is kind of like 0, and this is the, uh, I, I can't remember the term, the principal value, whatever. 3 pi over 2 is what we're looking for, and so that is 2x. 2x is 3 pi over 2, and cosine of 2x is going to be cosine of 3 pi over 2, and if you think about the unit circle again, this is 270 degrees, and its cosine is 0 because it's in the, in the y. It's on the y-axis, okay? Yeah, I could say it. So that would be the answer. So the answer is 0, and there's only one way to do it. Obviously, there's other ways to solve this problem. Another method that I can think of is you can also square both sides, find 2 sine x cosine x, which is sine 2x, and then by drawing a right triangle, you can find cosine 2x. You just have to pay attention to the quadrants, and that's it for today. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.